Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on innovative tools to boost adoption on SharePoint and Microsoft 365 through engagement and gamification. We are delighted to have you all with us today and uh, hopefully you all visited our booth at EduCon in Seattle last week. My name is Luzon, I am an account manager here at Cardiolog Analytics and I will show you our reports in more detail today. Firstly, let's get some logistics out of the way. Please feel free to submit your questions throughout the presentation via the Q&A feature, and we will address as many as we can during the Q&A segment at the end. And we are also recording this webinar, and we'll share the link with you after the event, and if you want to share, in case you want to share this with a colleague. So let's just dive right in. In regards to the agenda for today's webinar, We'll start out with a short introduction. I'll talk a bit about Cardiolog Analytics and who we are. And then I will talk about collecting and analyzing data and sending targeted campaigns based on the data as well as a way of boosting adoption and consumption. And then I will jump into a presentation of Cardiolog Analytics, Engage, as well as Gamify to show you how the tools should be leveraged. At the end, we will have some time for Q&A, so feel free to send your questions throughout the course of this presentation. So just a quick introduction. Cardiolog Analytics has been providing analytics for 365 for about 17, 18 years now. We started back with SharePoint on-prem and we grew with Microsoft to the cloud. And today we track everything from SharePoint to Teams, um, Yammer, Viva, Exchange, OneDrive, and so on. So a little bit about our vision as a company. This slide shows our evolution. Our goal is to help our customers to constantly improve SharePoint and Teams and those other applications based on how it's being used. So the four main pillars that we talk to our customers about are monitor, so monitoring activity, which is tracking the usage within SharePoint and Microsoft 365 platforms with in-depth internet analytics, insights, and usage reports. Our customers realized that understanding usage analytics is often simply not enough. They wanted a way to take action based on the insights gained from monitoring the portal usage. And then we have Enhance. We want to make sure that we're constantly improving SharePoint and Microsoft 365 based on these pillars. And the idea is to have actionable metrics, which will allow us to constantly make SharePoint better for our users by increasing corporate productivity and improving portal ROI. And then the final pillar is incentivize. We can turn that data into a game as well. So instead of just the admins owning the data, we can make sure those end users have access to the data and can see how they can compete with their colleagues, uh, get points and coins. And we conclude by seeing how we can turn that raw data into exciting gamification and leverage that within our organization as well. So SharePoint and Microsoft Teams and all the other Microsoft 365 applications are powerful collaboration platforms that can dramatically improve productivity and communication within your organization. And with the evolving workplace dynamics, those platforms have emerged as game changers in boosting productivity and enhancing, enhancing collaboration within organizations. However, realizing their full potential hinges on their adoption. Some best Practices to help you increase the adoption of these tools are providing comprehensive training and ongoing education for your employees, making sure your employees understand the benefits of using SharePoint and Teams, integrating SharePoint and Teams with other tools and systems used in your organization to enhance their value, making the tools easily accessible to all employees regardless of their location or device, encourage employees to use SharePoint and Teams for collaborative tasks, offer ongoing technical support and resources to help employees overcome any challenges they may face, and very importantly, monitoring and feedback. It is utterly important to use analytics to monitor how your employees are using the tools, 
and also to gather feedback to understand what is working well and what could be improved. This will help you make the necessary adjustments to your adoption strategies. Tools like Cardilog Analytics and Cardilog Engage can be extremely helpful in this regard. So with that, I will hop into a demo environment or a couple of demo environments so you can see exactly how you can also leverage usage data to actively drive adoption, collaboration, and consumption. So let me open the demo environment. First of all, here you can see uh, a very long list of some of the many out-of-the-box dashboards that Cardiolog Analytics customers get. And these dashboards are built on topics of interest to our customers, such as user adoption, um, search analytics, and here towards the bottom, we look at things like navigation. Today, we'll look through a couple of these dashboards to show you some of the data that you can get with Cardiolog Analytics. So the first dashboard is showing us high level adoption across 365 because these are some of the platforms that users are adopting well to and maybe we should focus on other platforms. Maybe for example Teams where we can see they have maybe a little bit less adoption potentially. Our next dashboard will be a more SharePoint centric dashboard. And here you can see on the far left side is the SharePoint hierarchy. We can see, of course, that we track hybrid deployments of SharePoint on-prem as well as SharePoint online. You can map out all of your sites. Here, for example, I have my HR site, IT, and we can, of course, drill down to lists, uh, libraries, down to list item level. So it's very easy to report on anything you want to within SharePoint, all the way down to list item level, like um, specific pages, uh, documents, announcements, really any content that you'd like to report on. Looking at, at some of the content um, that we have in this chart and on this table, let me just open this up. We can see here the most active or the most popular content based on these page view numbers. If we, for example, launched a new HR site or we have a new really important policy, we can see if people are actually taking advantage of that new content. And once we know about this, we can launch a campaign and make sure that people are in fact aware of that great new um, HR site or that important policy. But I can also flip this around And now I'm showing all the inactive content. So all the content not being used often, or in this case, as you see with all of these zeros, not at all. Whether it's sites or documents or pages, maybe entire sites people are not accessing. Um, it might be that they are old and they no longer they are no longer needed. So we can then archive those. Or perhaps it's new content that our users are simply unaware of. But again, doesn't matter what the case is, once you know about this, you're empowered to take action and make those necessary improvements, maybe deleting it or archiving. Um, maybe you want to notify everyone about the site and add a link to the home page. So besides views, you can also see other content, like things such as um, when last the content was viewed or accessed, the duration, or how long the content was viewed for. And of course, you can customize all of this. So if you don't care for the number of likes or, or page load time, you can remove those columns and other columns of data and add other columns of data instead. So that's the action we take based on what's most popular and also, like I showed you, the unused content. But we can see more information, like everything from who owns this content to the size. And these things also will help you take action. I want to go back to the report and show you at the top here, we have the different content types. So for example, if I just want to see documents for most popular and least popular instead of all the content, then I simply select documents and now you see that this report only shows data about documents. Here under adoption, I'm showing all of the 
active and the inactive users. So this is how we also know who is not very active. So you can target those who maybe need more training, maybe need more support in order to also improve their adoption rates. Below that, you can see that this breakdown by departments, um, but this is also customizable and it can be any attribute that you'd like to use, like a region, a country, branch, or even job title. So again, everything here can be filtered and sliced. If I click on the, on the department such as sales, it will filter the entire dashboard for just the sales team. So now I can see exactly the content they are interacting with or vice versa. If there's specific content that someone cares about, um, for example, benefits, And then we can see here that that content is, for example, mostly viewed by the technical support department and users in the purchasing team. So it's very easy to slice and dice the data by any attributes that you'd like to leverage. And so, for example, is everyone looking for the same document or the same page? If so, we'd want to surface that content so it's easier to find. So you're on the top left, we can see these uh, top search terms. Um, so if everyone in the company is searching for the term benefits, let's filter by that particular search term. We can filter here, we can filter there. So now you can see that benefits has been searched over 1100 times. And for example, if we multiply that by over 60 seconds per search, that is a lot of time wasted looking for one piece of content or one search term. But now that we know about it, we can surface it. Maybe I can add a link from the home page with the employee benefits to save a lot of time that's currently spent searching for that content and improve overall productivity in the organization and obviously help adoption as well. If you have existing content, um, on benefits, you may need to optimize that content or improve the search scheme to assist your users in connecting to it. And if you don't have a lot of helpful content, then this obviously informs you that um, what's a key indicator to start creating content to help your users get the information they need. Um, because basically, as technology becomes easier, people will come back and they'll use it more. If I continue here and we look at successful versus failed searches. You can see that it's a very high failed search rate. Um, this is very concerning because that means that only half of those users actually clicked on the results. And that means that even more time is obviously being wasted. Um, but once we have this data, we have a way of making improvements and that is what it's all about. Um, we also translate the raw data into time. You can see here that we are losing about how much time is being wasted and how much money is also being lost on failed searches. For example, now we can see that we are overall um, losing about 90, almost 96 hours of lost productivity on failed search alone. So going beyond usage, there is also usability. So here at the bottom right is page load time by geography. So is your SharePoint portal loading slower in, spe in specific parts of the world? Um, or you can drill down to a state or a territory or a branch. If we look at slow pages, This report identifies the pages on your site that take the longest to be displayed to your users. So if there is a lot of content loaded by the site owner on a single page, it would cause that page to take many seconds to load. And that could be a reason that no one is adopting the content. But once they are aware of that, that is when you are able to take action to make those improvements. You hop into navigation overview. All you have to do here 
is um, copy and paste the URL that you are curious about, maybe an important announcement or a blog post, maybe your homepage, and then you can find out what the previous page is, how folks get to that content or where they're going to as the next step in their journey. Or for a more in-depth journey or funnel, we can build those here very easily if we go to visit a journey. I'll take, for example, the most popu popular route that people are navigating through in SharePoint. So if we see that most users end up here at my blog, maybe we can add a link to this content whenever they reach the portal homepage, and that can save on the extra steps that all your users need to make to get to that content. So basically, these are the same dashboards um for teams and you can see similar data on how people are adopting teams so if we look at this very first dashboard um the usage overview dashboard what's really nice here is that we can see who our top teams are and also how active each top team is i'll scroll to the right here um like i said how active each top team is um, and that gives you a really good benchmark of what a, a productive or what a successful team looks like for you. So you can see the last activity date here on the right hand side. So if they didn't respond in the last 14 days or seven days, for example, you can archive those teams or give some training to those teams. Probably not seven days, that's a bit, that's a bit quick. If you hop into engagement overview, in order to monitor usage, you obviously have to review reports to also understand these type of emerging trends. For example, if we look at access type, this usage report shows that not many users are using a certain device to access Teams. And this may indicate that users aren't sure how to do so. So now we know that we can maybe add uh, or post step-by-step -step installation instruct instructions for that specific device, and that will help to drive usage of a much wider device range. If we look at team messages versus private messages, or private chat messages versus public messages, the usage report shows that users are primarily using Teams for Teams messages. But say, for example, it was the other way around, then you may want to review your team scenarios because then clearly users are chatting outside of the initial teams and channels that were set up for them. We can go even more in depth here. We can sort this by office or department so you can get more insights on how different locations and different groups are using teams and also what the top level of activity looks like. Again, by having these valuable insights you can reach out to your users to change their user behavior in order for them to be more productive and more collaborative if we look at influ influential content so for each team and channel you can see that they are sharing content and sending attachments so if customers want to give training for teams and we know a specific team isn't sharing content for example it might be that they don't know that it's a functionality. Maybe they don't know sending attachments is a functionality or that um, using applications within Teams is a functionality. Then this dashboard will inform us of that. And so now we know where to focus our training. It is important to track users' productivity within Teams to ensure that users are using all of the functionalities in Teams and not just using it as a chat-based platform, but actually using it to be productive and to be collaborative. We have amazing new dashboards around NLP and PII detection as well, which I'm very happy to show to you today. So NLP can significantly enhance the functionality and user experience of Microsoft Teams, helping organizations to maximize their collaboration and productivity. So some of those reports would be 
key phrases in messages. So the purpose of this report is to emphasize the prominent phrases that reflect the most discussed topics in Teams and their corresponding positive or negative sentiment. And also languages used in messages. This report provides insights into the language usage within Teams. So by applying filters such as English, you can then ascertain the sentiment of messages specifically in that language. And if we look at message sentiment ratio, analyzing the sentiment ratio in Microsoft Teams messages through sentiment analysis provides really valuable insights into the overall sentiment, sentiment within the team or organization. It, it helps to uh, gauge satisfaction, identify areas of improvement, um, monitor sentiment trends, and then obviously address concerns. Sentiment analysis in Microsoft Teams messages allows teams and organizations to quantify sentiment, drive positive engagement, and make data-driven decisions, which is what it is all about. And then our last dashboard that I want to show you regarding Teams is EII detection. So Cardiolog Analytics can identify teams with PII by category, which improves companies or it provides companies a way to effectively manage data risks and enforce appropriate access controls, ensuring compliance and respond efficiently to any security incident or breaches um, that involve PII. And then also PII detections by entity type, Cardiolog Analytics provides PI by entity type to enhance data governance, strengthen security controls, comply with regulatory requirements, and streamline various aspects of data management and protection. So now we have all of this amazing data, we have all of these insights, but how can we actually leverage it? in order to improve my platforms and my environments? How can I actually drive adoption and engagement and collaboration? And the game changer there is Cardiolog Engage. Cardiolog Engage pulls all of the data from Cardiolog Analytics. And based on that data, we launch campaigns to target specific users or departments. So we can promote a page, for example, we can notify people about a change on a page, we can ask questions to specific users, specific departments. But what I want to show you today, we'll skip all of these country, canned um, campaigns and we will create a campaign from scratch. So for example, if we want to send a targeted message to users who are inactive, so users who did not visit or complete the search, or let's go with Teams, interact with Microsoft Teams ever, or maybe in the last 15 days, 14 days, 30 days, then I want to send a message to all of these users. So I don't want to bombard everyone or every single user with this message. I just want to send that message to the necessary audience. Maybe I want to send a message to a specific group. That will be users belonging to either SharePoint, a specific department in SharePoint, or maybe Teams, a specific team in Teams. Or I can go ahead and create my own group. So I'll choose a user profile, maybe a geography. It really depends on who you want to target and what you want to target them about. And that will help you decide um, who would be your audience. So the next step will be to choose a channel. How do I want to engage with them? Do I want to send a quick text message to that all of those users, that specific department, that specific team? Maybe an in-app message in SharePoint that will pop up right on the SharePoint page as a header or footer. That could be really um, effective because you know when they are already um, on that specific SharePoint page, they are already engaged, so what better time for this pop-up to appear? 
or maybe I can send them a message right within Teams that will show up in a channel in Teams, maybe send them a link to important policy right within a Teams channel. So the next step would be designing that message. What do you want the message to say? Um, have a look. Have a look at this important policy. Um, there could be a call to action. That could be, um, I can ask them to confirm that they've received a message. If I want to invite them maybe to training, I can ask them to RSVP to that training. Maybe a great call to action could just be an open question. I can maybe ask them for feedback and then the best call to action would be open question where they can actually write the paragraph and give me that necessary feedback. And then the last step would be the trigger. Do I want to send that message or that pop-up immediately? Do I want to schedule it to be sent at a specific date or time? Or do I want to send a trigger message? You set up the trigger to run the specific campaign based on the user's behavior in SharePoint. So maybe when they are scrolling down a specific page or viewing a specific page, maybe whilst they are busy performing a search, you can ask them, did you find what you were looking for? So it's all about sending the right message to the right user in order to get the necessary results in order to drive adoption and collaboration and consumption within a specific team or department. I want to just quickly go back to show you Gamify real quick. I know we are out of time, but I'll be really, really quick because I really want to show you the gamification part as well. So what's really neat about Gamify is that this data is aimed at the end user. So how do we all take that rich data and then turn it into more of a game or more of a competition? So have a look here at the SharePoint page. And here at the top, we have our gamification ribbon. And we are playing as Jack. So for every action that Jack makes in SharePoint, whether it's viewing, um, counting, liking, commenting, creating new content, um, he will get points, or in this case, coins. And you can assign a specific value of coins for different actions. So if you want to promote more social actions like liking or commenting that might be worth 10 points, whereas viewing content might be worth a single point. So as Jack goes through the day and gets points and coins, he will also get these badges here where he can see how he is accomplishing them. And this is both an individual question where Jack can be, a, can be against his colleagues in his department, for example, in the QA team here. And also it can be a group competition where the QA team competes against other departments within the organization. So if we want to make sure that managers are encouraging their employees and their team to use 365, here that group competition can really show that. So we typically reset the game every week or every month. And here you can see the winners of last week's competition so that we can congratulate them and they will appear here for the entire next week of competition or next month of competition. So that's a great way to encourage them to use SharePoint more. And then finally, we have all important insights as well. So if everyone from the QA team read the new CO blog, we can recommend that for Jack as well. And then he's discovering new content and that might be really interesting to him and of course he's gaining points and coins for consuming that new content. So that is what I wanted to share with you all during our demo today. Let me just go back to my presentation. So in conclusion, Cardiolog is an instrumental tool in driving user adoption of SharePoint and Microsoft Teams. By delivering personalized experiences and proactive engagement, it can really transform the way your organization interacts with these platforms. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, I am really out of time. 
So I will only be able to answer one of these questions. Um, I see I do have a question from Rachel. Um, Rachel is asking, what is the licensing for this? So um, this is a yearly, this license is a yearly subscription based on the number of users that we'll be tracking. So if you want, if you have any more questions regarding this, you can also reach out to us directly. Um, you can contact us at info at um, You can get really helpful information about analytics, about engagement, about all the solutions I've just shown you um, on our website. If you visit us at www.carilogalytics.com, we can also set up a free trial for you if you want, if you wish to try any of these solutions in your organization. And then there's really great information also on our blog if you go to blog at inclock.com. Thank you very much to everyone who joined us today. Um, thank you for the question that was sent in and we will be sending you um, a link to view this webinar on our website. So if there's anything else that you wish to go over or view again with your team, then you'd be able to find this content. So have a good rest of your day and goodbye.